Um, hello, welcome to my podcast. I look pretty bad right now. No, that's not <laughs> relevant. That's not relevant. Anyways, um, welcome to today's podcast. Now I'm doing it Madeline RG style because she has inspired me and uh, that's why I'm in the car. So <laughs> I'm recording this video podcast um, in, in, in the car. I can't drive yet, but that's not the um, topic of today's podcast. <laughs> but anyways, today I'm going to be talking about... Let me just get my notes up. Um, <laughs> I have not done... I have not filmed a video in a car uh, since I was probably like... I don't know, like 13. I, I need some caffeine in my system. Today I'm going to be talking about how the answer isn't living in the middle of nowhere, slash in the woods, slash what it feels like being in your 20s living in the middle of nowhere. Now, if you didn't know, because I, I really do not talk about it on my channel because it has such an effect on me, but I do live in the middle of nowhere and um, it has affected me all of my life, but I, I don't talk about it because, I don't know, because of the trauma of living in the middle of nowhere, I guess. I'm going to be talking about what it's like being in your 20s, living in the middle of nowhere, basically, and how that experience is like for me in my 20s. Now, I am 23, I'm going to be 24 this year, and I still live with my parents, which is in the middle of nowhere, and that is really difficult for me considering that i am in my 20s and that is a difficult location to be at in your 20s <laughs> of course the the like image of the countryside and the middle of nowhere is very different for other people and i understand that but living in a rural area in your 20s is a different story because you're in your 20s <laughs> it's very different for older people and people that you know really really take the pleasure in you know a rural area where they can thrive and live and enjoy their life for me being in my 20s i don't think it's very beneficial for me in many many ways which I will get into <laughs> because I, I have a lot of notes here so I'm going to get into that. I haven't done a podcast since last year and I'm feeling very inspired by podcasts right now. I know I do commentary content on my YouTube. This is also going onto my YouTube but I do enjoy talking a lot so that's why I'm here today to talk. Okay, first of all, people um, have this impression of your 20s and what it means being in your 20s. So, you know, <laughs> as most people think your 20s is, is basically like partying, studying, Traveling the world and having, making lots of money, all of that, falling in love and people think that your 20s is basically a bunch of exploring everything that you possibly can if you're able to. I don't know, I think everyone in their 20s has a different sort of perception on what their 20s is and I think it's very different for every person in their 20s and it's not what the media and 
this image that people have of people in their 20s already being successful and traveling the world doing a bunch of stuff where they've already established themselves in their 20s or in their late 20s but really i think everyone in their 20s is there's like a there's like an in-between stage i feel for me where it's like figuring everything out and then your career so for me right now i'm figuring everything out whilst also trying to discover my career and i think it's very hard when you're trying to just figure out your own life and that's what everyone in their 20s does but there's this image that people in their 20s are like able to you know get a house or a flat or you know something really big or have huge success so fast because you're in your 20s it's your roaring 20s you can do anything of course you can do anything i'm not saying that you can't <laughs> you can but there is this expectation for people in their 20s to already have some sort of fast success because of course the media shows loads of people that are young adults getting successful on social media and achieving all of those big things in their early 20s and their late 20s for some people it's not that achievable because all we can see is the media and there is this perception of people in their 20s i cannot explain it <laughs> apart from everyone in their late 20s or their early 20s will tell you that that everyone's just trying to figure shit out <laughs> i'm sorry youtube i swore everyone's trying to figure figure shit out and uh, there is this expectation that you should have your shit figured out pretty early if you're in your 20s and if you don't then you're a failure but really you're not you're not a failure you're just figuring life out like everyone else is i think there's a misconception with that because because of the media and social media and how young people have gotten successful online and how there's almost this <sighs> people just expect you to be successful already when you're literally 22 or 23 or 24 etc etc in your 20s <laughs> next section i'm going to be talking about the reality of being in your 20s in the middle of nowhere and how for someone who lives in a town or a city and how that's very different because of course they're they're very extreme different contrasts especially in your 20s now as i said earlier people ex expect if you're in your 20s to at least live in a city or in a town or somewhere where there's community and people and for me being in my 20s living in the middle of nowhere in living in the middle of nowhere in a rural area is very difficult for me because i'm a people person and i appreciate community and i would rather be around people all the time because that's what inspires my life and if i'm deprived from it i stumble into this depression because i'm not surrounded by people or like normal life as you would call it considering that i live in the middle of nowhere i <laughs> everything that is outside like you know a town or a city feels like normal society to me and being in the middle of nowhere doesn't really feel like a place of course it's a place but i mean it doesn't really feel like like a a society where there's community and people and everyone is doing things and here it's very different because i'm not surrounded by people or life or 
I get the enjoyment of watching other people when I'm like away from the countryside. So yeah, I, I get genuine enjoyment from people watching and seeing people do like normal things and have normal jobs and you know, <laughs> not be like this sort of isolated environment where there's nothing to be inspired by or really think that uh, there's a future there because I'm not really surrounded by a community or people or people doing things outside like I do not experience the same thing because I am not surrounded by in my location it takes like an hour to get to the nearest cinema or a park or anything really like <laughs> even if I wanted to go shopping I would have to take the train and go out of here to experience a normal life <laughs> and that is why it's hard for me here being in my early 20s in the middle of nowhere because I feel like I'm not really experiencing life as I should be and of course the countryside is very peaceful and it's very relaxing but for me it's very isolating and that, that I really struggle with that considering how my mental health uh, is always up, up and down then I would rather be completely out of here living a normal life like a normal 20 year old now I'm not 20, I'm, I'm 23 going to be 24 and you really, you really wouldn't expect that <laughs> for anyone in their 20s to be in the middle of nowhere not experiencing life like other people of course when I was younger I obviously had a lot of friends from school and I had parties and it did make me feel like I belonged more than I do now <laughs> which is very odd because now there's no people and when I went to uni it was the most freeing because I was surrounded by community and people and people with the same interests or even not the same interests there was different communities around me and that was very freeing and I know that some people would think that being in the countryside or a rural area would be very freeing but to me it's not very freeing and I have experienced city life because last year I spent months with my auntie in London and considering that I didn't have that much money I had like mm, like a hundred pounds from what I saved I managed and city life wasn't wasn't uh, that scary I know even people think that the city is scary because of the stereotype of that and the generalization which I don't think is very beneficial for people that actually live in the city and know what the city is like sometimes a busy place is very interesting and I like busy places but yeah, I, I did spend a couple months in London exploring, going on dates before I met my boyfriend and um, yeah, that was a very interesting experience for me because I was surrounded by people. I literally came home at night, like at, at 11 o'clock and doing a bunch of photo shoots and stuff. And that was fun because I I could explore life like other people and <laughs> here I don't feel like I experience life like other people. I feel very different and almost alien alienated from society and as a person that actually can see all the flaws in society and capitalism and blah 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 this is why I have a commentary this is why I make commentary content about social and political culture because I understand it and I can see it from a different lens 
I do enjoy the outside world, if you would call it that, but it does feel like that to me. Everything out of the countryside feels like the actual normal world that I should be living in. The reality of it is that I don't have that many friends. I do not have a social life. I I can't drive, but that's my own problem. I, I have this anxiety of driving because I have ADHD or whatever. Whatever I have, I might be like, what? who knows? Because I don't know yet. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, I, I can't do that, so I have to travel in other ways to get out of here and also like jobs and everything is much more difficult living in the middle of nowhere because again I'm not surrounded by other people so it feels like a very difficult task for me to do compared to someone who would live in a in a town or a city they would be more open to finding a job in a week and for me it feels like the most daunting the most well it's not really that daunting to me it's just very difficult for me to actually feel like I can get a job because if someone was hiring me they'll be like oh you live in the middle of nowhere how are you gonna travel to your job and for other people they live in a town or a city and it it's very easy to get to that job and as well considering that I studied media again it's very hard for me <laughs> on to the next thing there is a like fantasy world that sort of happens in the middle of nowhere compared to actual functioning society which as you guys know I do like being a part of I don't want to be isolated forever <laughs> here but there is a sort of like fantasy about if you live in the middle of nowhere like you have it all you can you know you're on top of the world you're going to become rich it's easy to become delusional in the middle of nowhere now i haven't my family have become delusional from living in the middle of nowhere but um actually let's just say like reword this because i don't think i'm saying this right <laughs> so living in the middle of nowhere creates this almost like bubble where it feels so out of touch of reality and society that that's that's just what it becomes and for me i have not really experienced that of course i've experienced like bad mental health from living in the middle of nowhere in this sort of bubble <laughs> and yeah it is a literal bubble like there will be delusion there will be bouncing off the walls and it, it does feel like you're not a part of society so for other people they would find that as a benefit because they're like ah oh, we live in the middle of nowhere therefore we can like go against society and like society's the problem and the government isn't helping and this sort of like <laughs> delusional like narrative that because you live in the middle of nowhere you're more able to do those things where really in retrospect it's not that beneficial for those who live here that's just the wrong place and the wrong mindset to be living in in the middle of nowhere but that happens like there is this like sort of fantasy like effect that happens from from living in the middle of nowhere and i i'm glad that i'm not really like that because i actually enjoy society and I know that it has its flaws and all of that that tends to happen because of the effects of living in the middle of nowhere and I'm glad I'm not really in that sort of narrative slash mindset because I have explored of this bubble and I have seen 
the actual world for what it is not just mainly around this this bubble i don't really think like that <laughs> on to the next part i'm going to be talking about um how living in the middle of nowhere affects mental health in general and how for me it created depression isolation and loneliness when i was a kid now if you want a backstory i moved here with my parents when i was six and it, it was easy for me to adapt because i was so young and we moved from france from the south of france to the middle of nowhere now of course um my my parents don't really say this but we literally lived in a flat and the flat wasn't that bad it was in the south of france i do have very good memories of that flat because of the animals that we had and it was just the south of france so <laughs> but anyways we we used to live in a flat we didn't have that much money and we moved here before the recession all that inflation that happened in england so yeah we moved here because of other reasons like education the health system and everything else like we had family here we have family everywhere but england was the the option and i didn't mind it like i have nothing against england when when we first moved there i didn't really get that affected by the countryside like for me as a kid it was very fun because i could climb trees my grandpa like built us a tree house i was surrounded by chickens now of course because i love animals so much that was like the dream for me so i i spent most of my time in the chickens picking up the chickens and that made me like very happy when i was a kid and i'm glad i had that experience as a child because being surrounded by nature as a kid was very beneficial but now as an adult of course i love being surrounded by nature but i'm talking in retrospect to mental health like with the isolation of the countryside it's very different when you're an adult because as an adult in your 20s you want to be surrounded by people and you want to network and you want to you know move further into your life and your path and your career and your love life uh, all of that stuff you want to do that in your 20s now for me being here is not that easy considering my mental health goes like way down <laughs> it goes way down when i'm when i'm here and that helpful considering uh that my parents uh have always like not validated it so all of my mental health problems have not been like you know diagnosed or seen to and uh, the effect of living in the middle of nowhere does tend to make it worse and that is why i struggle especially with my adhd I feel motivated when i'm literally isolated uh now in terms of my depression i was really depressed when i was a teenager i think that also has to do with where i am and where i live because compared to again like everyone else out of here lives in a town or in, or in a village like i had some friends from my nearby village that i was friends with and i went to theirs and i felt normal <laughs> but uh for me i again i didn't have that sort of experience when i was surrounded by lots of friends like other people yeah that that was really difficult because everyone can go and see their friends when they want to <laughs> like <laughs> which is why i i enjoyed uni because i could just you know go go and see my friends at like three o'clock in the morning and that would be fun and i would really enjoy that i did have a social life when i was a teenager and i had lots of parties like i've said already and that was very nice for me but now all of the people that i went to primary school with 
have moved on with their life. They they have partners. They have houses now. And I'm just here in the middle of nowhere, just like, please get me out because it's really like deteriorating for my mental health. <laughs> so um, even though I did have a social life as a teenager. I did have a lot of mental health problems and I feel like the environment of of living living in the middle of the countryside does really affect your mental health more which is why sometimes I actually have no inch of motivation to film or write a video because it's just it's just a struggle and of course again like if you're old middle aged and you know life is completely different for you because you're you're a different age you've experienced it all but for me with that isolation and mental health that comes with the with this location it is really difficult and even that, like getting any sort of like mental health support or a, or a support system is very difficult in this environment. And I do feel like it would have been better for me if I was in a town. Because even in a town when I went to uni, I had therapy for a while. I was feeling like I was making progress with myself, like with my own path. Um, but I think I, I always experience that when, when I'm away, <laughs> and that tends to happen. Now, uh, on to the next bit, that is the sort of romanticization of your 20s, also a romanticization of the middle of nowhere as well. I promise you, m moving to the middle of nowhere is not going to solve all your problems is not going to be that cottage core fantasy because I, I promise you it's not like that <laughs> living in the middle of nowhere is not is not cottage core it is not it, it's not the life that you see on pinterest maybe I sh maybe maybe i'll talk about that on the next bit actually talk about the romanticization of being in your 20s and how that's very different like, I know it's different for everyone, as I've said. Everyone in their 20s has a complete different experience and everyone is valid. But there is a romanticization for young people. And just in general, like, people in their 20s, like, you'll see it all over TikTok. Everyone, well, not everyone. <laughs> Most influencers in their 20s have their, their life figured out. They, they have they're financially free, they they have a career, they have children probably, they're probably married. You know, there is this sort of romanticization of people in their twenties and how we have things figured out but we don't. There's never there's never this like image uh, representation of like people in their twenties figuring it out. I only see that from people in their actual 20s but the popular culture of the media like romanticizing yeah everyone in their 20s like they have it figured out there's never this like reality of it unless you're you know in your 20s and documenting your life <laughs> on youtube or whatever or or on tiktok which is where you'll see young people and people in their actual 20s discovering life. But in the media, there tends to be this image that we have shit figured out and that we are more financially free and that we have no problems. And I don't think that's very, I don't think that's a very good representation considering society and, and capitalism and, you know, other problems that occur with people in their 20s especially with like films and tv like again they'll show you that your 20s are like 
exciting, almost like dream-like adventure of it. And uh, of course it, it does feel like that sometimes, and of course like, you know, I don't, no one has to rush to achieve their dreams. I do feel like we can get this image that if you're in your 20s, you should have your shit figured out by now and that you should know life like this. You should know life already <laughs> when really we haven't uh, discovered it yet or we're like reaching different points of life at different times and I don't think, I don't think society and the media really show that. Okay, on to the next section, I'm going to be talking about the romanticisation of the countryside and the cottagecore aesthetic. Okay, cottagecore aesthetic. Actually, definition. Okay, now cottagecore is an internet aesthetic popularised by adolescents and young adults celebrating an idolised rural life traditionally based on a rural English and Indian life. It was developed through the 2010s and was named Cottagecore on Tumblr in 2018. Um, yeah, that is the definition of Cottagecore. Now there is this uh, idealization of the rural life and I've seen this on YouTube actually which uh, makes me quite frustrated about how Cottagecore and actually living in the rural area in your 20s is a huge, it's a huge contrast to if you're actually living in in the countryside in your 20s. <laughs> now with this cottagecore aesthetic you will see young people and people in their 20s as well. <sighs> you, you know what, just drink every time I say in your 20s because I've said it so many times now. <laughs> But yeah, with this aesthetic, there is this sort of romanticization of, you know, living in the middle of nowhere is peaceful. You can, you know, cook, bake, you can bake and cook whatever and it will be heavily romanticized. But the aesthetic compared to the actual normal way of living in a rural area and the slow life of the slow life aesthetic of it all is very different <laughs> because again with this sort of like romanticization and idealization okay, let's just start again with this romanticization and idealization of the rural area in England and the countryside there there's this sort of like image of it that you're always going to be looking pretty, going on picnics, having like a bunch of animals near you. It's almost like that um, that thing that I saw on TikTok where it's like farmer's daughter take one and um, how in, in the movie Pearl she's like, oh like get me out of here. One day I'm gonna get out of this farm <laughs> and that's how I feel. Cottage court aesthetic is very different to actually living in the middle of nowhere but I've seen this as a trend recently on YouTube and again it frustrates me because no one's actually showing the actual reality of it and I feel like in the media and society it, you'll only see the cottage core aesthetic because that's what people think that's what people think is countryside living it, it's slow and peaceful and there's community and of course like there's different countryside places where it's not like my experience like some other people might might experience totally different things and I'm aware of that um but for me that sort of aesthetic uh very, it frustrates me because it's not really the reality of it like of course you can romanticize your life and make it look manageable and you know once it's romanticized it, it doesn't really matter but uh, yeah that the cottage core aesthetic isn't really what countryside living is at all 
um, even the romanticization of you know running away to the middle of the woods and in a cabin I promise you it, it, it's not going to benefit you <laughs> I, I promise I promise a hut in the woods is not really the romanticization of it and I, I also understand that if you're from a city or a town that it is a relaxing break but living here is a different story and um, to me it comes with more cons than pros for older people I understand that it has more, more pros than cons uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the struggle of moving out when you live in a rural area and how it's very different to most people that are my age in the early and late 20s uh, now for me I, I've been thinking about moving out since I was 18 obviously I went to uni so I experienced the uni, the uni lifestyle and life I enjoyed that a lot but as soon as I came back to live with my parents, all I have been thinking about, whew, all I've been thinking about is moving out. Uh, but for me, that's very difficult considering my situation is not like other people my age. Uh, for me, it's, it's more of a tough process because I have to find a job that is remote or somewhat my own job like doing social media which I or doing my own job where I'm self-employed like social media which I hope I, I am manifesting to the manifesting gods that I will be able to do YouTube full time because it's something I'm really passionate about and it gives me this opportunity to talk about topics and subjects to do with people and society and popular culture that I'm passionate about and that makes me happy. And my degree as well, I find it very difficult to find a media job in this environment compared to other people where, again, it would be easier for them. We're continuing. Uh, yeah, for, for other people, I it's very different because you can find a job as soon as you're out of uni. Uh, for me, it's very difficult because I have applied to like 30 jobs and feel like I won't actually get a job until I'm in a city or a town and a different environment because I'll be surrounded by people in actual society. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that comes with the process. That comes with the process of moving out like again it would be easier if I lived in a town because I I would be able to get a job at 18 or 16 I mean or even I don't know I would be able to get something coming out of uni if I was in a different environment or situation I know this is just what I have to like deal with yeah that's why when I'm somewhere else out of this location, I do feel like my opportunities are endless and that they are right in front of me. ETC, ETC, like even with YouTube and, and my podcast again, I feel like if I was in a city, I would get more opportunities as a creator or even finding a normal job like working in a coffee shop or a bookshop or with animals which is what I would probably do but it's very difficult for me to feel like I can move out but that is one of the main goals for me right now is just to move out so then I can actually focus on my career whatever that is whatever the universe makes it to be uh, I know I will be happier when when I'm not living in the middle of nowhere and it's exciting yeah. can't I explain it every time I'm not in the countryside I do feel like a normal human being and I do feel like I do have opportunities in front of me rather than not really having any because that is how it is like being here and isolated the only thing I have uh, connected to society 
it is the media and YouTube where I feel like I can make a community and talk to people and really expand on my consciousness <laughs> basically yeah moving out is very difficult <laughs> but I, I do work for my parents so I should save all of, all of the money that I can make here but I do want to find my own job and I, I, I want to make YouTube my full-time job but again I'm not really handed with that many opportunities unless the, unless something you know magical happens and I'll be very grateful for that but I, I do have different um, I do have a different deck of cards and I am figuring everything out but it is very different to normal people and I hate saying the word normal people because I actually appreciate normal people <laughs> compared to like my family they, they're very they're so isolated and then this narrative that normal people are kind of scary to me I, I really enjoy that <laughs> so <laughs> on to the next bit I well the last last bit of this podcast we're we'll talking about the pros and cons of living in the middle of nowhere uh in my own my own from my own experience because um yeah i mean like, i could look some up i don't know what should i do <laughs> uh well the the I don't, to me I, there's more cons than pros but for other people i know the pros and cons would be very different so for older people, the pros would be able to just be surrounded by nature and having this peace and tranquility that you won't find in a busy city or a village or a town. But for me, I, I kind of enjoy the busyness. <laughs> uh, well, the cons to me are really that there's, there's isolation uh, it's not the best place for your mental health, no matter what your mental health is like. It will definitely change over time, being surrounded by isolation. And although you're surrounded by nature, which is good for your mental health, that isolation truly makes it worse. So the nature is beautiful, but it becomes sort of dull over time because of the effect of it all. Another con is that you won't have a social life. <laughs> now, my parents, they say they have friends, but I, I, don't, I don't really see them having a community of friends that they can talk to about their person. And for me, I, I do feel like I, I don't, I have, I have a lack of social life. Like, I have friends from uni but they live in the city and I feel very far away from them. I spend time with them because I'm in the in the countryside. Um another another con another Okay. I'm I'm just gonna look it up. I, I feel like I'm a two minute. Okay, so let's just look, I'm just gonna look it up. Oh man, I got cramps. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the pros of uh, rural living is that it's quieter with a fewer noisy neighbors and ra the pros of rural living, one, it's quieter. We'll have uh, fewer noisy neighbors and no rush hour traffic. And when you're working from home, you can ditch the earplugs, earplugs at night because there won't be sirens everywhere and there won't be like this chaos around you. Another pro is that it's nearer to nature. You won't have to load up the car and drive before setting off on a countryside walk because it, it will be right in front of you. Another pro is that there is less pollution so you'll be able to breathe natural air that isn't polluted, which you obviously get in the city or in busy places that isn't the countryside. 
Um, <laughs> this is another pro, but I don't really see this as a pro. Uh, another pro is that there's fewer people. Now, if you're a firm believer in John Paul Sartre, I can't say his name, and I'm French, that philosopher Sartre, Sartre. Ah, how do I say it? I do like his philosophy work. Um, John Paul Sartre. So why, why can I not say his name? Anyway, I'm going to put it up on the screen. Jean Paul Sartre. His name. The philosopher, <laughs> the French one that I cannot say as a French person. He quotes that hell is other people, so you'll love the feeling of abandoning an overall populated town in the favour of a tiny village. Now, I don't live in a village. I live in the middle of nowhere. And I do find the fewer people as a pro being a con because I would rather be surrounded by people. Because in life I need to meet people and to to uh, be inspired by people. But maybe that's because I'm an artist in some way, whatever that means. Another pro is that it's safer for children so you'll feel less parental guilt. You'll feel less guilt that the kids aren't exposed to all that city pollution and now have a daisy filled to play in instead of pavement. Another pro is that you'll get more for your money and that is because of the housing prices and any like sort of living situation. It's very difficult these days to find a place with good rent. Especially due to the inflation. Number seven, as a pro, you you have an excuse to say no to invites. Now this is also a con because even though it says it's a pro, I think it's a con because again, why would you not be? Why would you say no to people? I would rather have a social life and have people to talk to than be able to say no to invites because it means I can go out. I can go out of here. <laughs> I would rather go out and meet people at a party or anywhere. I would not say no to an invite ever. <laughs> I mean, I have I have done before uh, many times, but not here at uni. <laughs> but even at uni, I made the most trying to get out to to anywhere to parties or whatever. Uh, number eight is that everyone will want to visit. So if you live in the countryside, everyone will be attracted by this sort of lifestyle and it being in the countryside because to other people it's a nice break. It's a nice break where you can be in peace and have no distractions and you know, in terms of technology, but <laughs> again, if you actually live in the middle of nowhere, you will know that you're actually prone to being more chronically online than other people in, in a different place or location. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the cons. So the cons is that everyone will want to visit. So this is also a con. It may be fun to show paradise at first, but if you're not careful, you'll end up feeling like you're running b and except none of your guests are paying. Now, another con is that shops are far away. And yes, it does feel like you're far away from civilization. <laughs> and your whole life revolves around having food on the table because of living in the countryside. And also it is very far away. Like I said, even traveling, I have to travel to a bus stop or a train station to get out of here. <laughs> uh, another con is that it's further from culture, such as galleries, museums, theatres, cinemas, few and far between outside of major metro policies. Cultural vultures will have to travel to get their fix. Yeah, it is very far from culture in many aspects. Yeah, another con is that you can't pop around to your friends' houses. Like I explained uh, earlier, you literally cannot do that. <laughs> you literally can't, which is why 
it's better. It's beneficial to actually have a social life. <laughs> uh, number 12, uh, you'll need a car. Yes. I am in one right now and I cannot drive. Um, number 14, you can't be anonymous. You might begin to miss the anonymity of the big city in places where nosy neighbours and gossip mongers, mongers abound. I understand. Uh, another con is that you'll be an outsider at first. Now for me, I still feel like an outsider and it, for me, I still do feel like an outsider even after this long of living in the countryside. Um, but I think that's just because of my age. I do feel very alienated and I do feel like an alien. Even though I am not an alien, I'm a human being. And then the last con is that your kids will want to escape. Now, if you do have kids, this will happen, depending on the kid and their personality. But I'm not a kid anymore, and I do want to escape because I want to see culture, I want to see people, I want to be inspired by life. And yeah, this is life, and this is the countryside, but it's not as inspiring as people make it out to be. <laughs> Especially in your 20s, like, it would be nice to come here if I uh, was surrounded by busyness and desired peace. But sometimes there is no peace. There's just isolation, uh, not being able to experience life in, in the same way that people my age are experiencing life. And I'm excited for when the universe gives me an opportunity to get out of here, like like Pearl says in, in the movie Pearl by A24, uh, how she wants to get out of this farm and be a star. Now, I may not be famous, but uh, I know that getting out of here will give me a lot of opportunities. And I'm excited for that day, whenever it happens. My computer is going to die in in a second, maybe. <laughs> but um, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I am back on my podcast game. <laughs> I'm back on my podcast game and let me know your thoughts about how you feel about the rural countryside and the romanticization and your, your general thoughts about countryside living and how your life is in your 20s, even if you're not living in the countryside. I am still curious to know your thoughts and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm, I'm new to do video podcasts, but I'm giving it a shot anyways. <laughs> anyways, I hope you enjoyed the podcast and I shall see you in my next one. And I hope you have a lovely day and yeah, let me know your thoughts. I have a Twitter called I Talk To Podcast where you can tell me what you think or you can DM me on Instagram or write a YouTube comment because I'm, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on this topic. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I appreciate you so much. Okay. Okay, that, that's my, my camera's dying. Okay, bye.